documentation. So we'll understand how to use Postman to create our own API documentation, which we can send it uh, to the respective team whenever we want it. So we want to create a documentation like this. And the beauty of this documentation, it is auto-generated. I mean, like I just need to do a little bit to tweaks over here in there, and this documentation is created. Uh, so you might have heard of Swagger or you might have not heard of Swagger. It's pretty fine. But Swagger is also an API documentation tool. But Postman, since uh, you have, you're using Postman, guys. So what comes into picture is they already provide you an inbuilt mechanism to generate all your API documentation. So we want something like that for our application also. So let's see how exactly we'll be doing it over the week. Um, so by Thursday onwards, we'll be completing the basic part of the Postman and we'll also see how do we have this um, variables and all those things in the next class. So the basic lectures of Postman, I'll be completing it this week. The next lecture on the next week, we'll be focusing on the advanced sections of the Postman. Okay, so let's get started. So over you guys, uh, let me share you this API documentation only and this URL in the chat box. You can parallelly do with me if you're just practicing it with me. So I'm just putting it in the chat box. You can take it from there. The first link that I've given you is the static documentation that I have created. Static means uh, if something changes now, I have to manually go and do that stuff. So whatever is there on circle.test automation academy, simple API, APS for practice, this is a static documentation that we have created. If tomorrow something changes in the application, something changes in the URL or in the API section, I have to do it manually. The second one is an auto-generated documentation. I am just going to focus on working on my Postman and the APIs are going to, API documentations are automatically going to generate for us. And these are the two things that um, we will be seeing. Of course, the static one is a bad practice because you know you have to maintain it off. But anyways, if you do not know the later one, we can still have the, uh, the static one to be taken care of. Now let's get started on making the API request over here and let's see how exactly these things are gonna work. So let me just save this one, cancel it. And let's create a new collection out of it over here. So let's say I'm gonna create a new collection altogether, altogether different project we are working on. So I'm gonna call this as product rest uh, API collection. The name of the collection that I've given over here is product rest API collection. One thing that you would have observed is I'm, I'm not giving spaces whenever I give um, the name of the collection. Okay, yesterday I gave it, but generally we don't follow that practice of spacing in the variable name. The, the second thing, or the name of the collection, sorry. The second thing is the naming part. If you see that P is capital, R is capital, A is capital, C is capital. These are all the good practices. It's just a practice, okay? like you want to do it you can do it if you want to give spaces then you have to handle the issues that might come with the space also but generally i'll advise you make it a one word if your habit of having space imagine there's no space keyword now you have to start giving underscore okay the space keyword uh the space key in your keyboard doesn't work so just make sure that you start giving underscore the only reason I'm telling you guys to follow this one is because it is going to create if you start giving spaces what happens is you end up making mistakes on the terminal level. Okay, we don't want to make those mistakes. So whether uh, let's quickly avoid that stuff. Okay, so just avoid spacing whenever you're dealing with variable uh, file names, collection names, any of these things, avoid this stuff. The description over here, you can read it down. If you can't read it, let me read it for you guys. It's written over here, make things easier for your teammates with a complete collection description. That's what it's trying to say. What exactly this collection is all about? What exactly this project is all about? So obviously um, we are just gonna use it for um, product rest. I'm just gonna write a simple uh, statement what exactly this collection is all about. Product rest API uh, collection is a set of CRUD Endpoints. I don't know, something like that. I've just written it over here for people to understand what exactly it's going to do. Okay. Um, consist of APIs uh, like HTTP, so get 
post coach uh, delete okay and these are the four kind of http verbs that are going to be there now why do we need to write it down the thing over here is we will be whatever you're going to write it down in the description now those things are going to get reflected in the api documentation so we want to generate it automatically so we have to fill certain details uh, for us right so these things will be taken care by your uh, this data is going to be required by your api documentation part okay so we will have this part in the picture and i'm just going to click on create button and we have a basic uh, like an empty collection that we have created it out over here okay nothing major that i have done it's only that i have created a collection and this particular collection has um, a description that i've given okay now when you are working on a project right you should always give a description for the project okay what exactly is the project all about what exactly you are trying to do sometimes you can also give the ownership of this particular collection so if i click on edit i can also give the ownership uh, so let's say author and just put an at the rate sign and you can just give your id or something like that okay you have to do this thing so that people can understand who has created this collection all this information again is going to be showcased in your in your um, api documentation part just click on update we got this thing in the picture now the next thing guys let's start making the api request so let's see how exactly we are going to do that stuff okay so i'm just going to click on edit um let's let's create a request over here now we have to do the end to end flow of this particular application now this is the back end application guys it does not have a front end meaning there are only apis there are no back uh, for you um ui so if i copy this particular part and i search it on the ui you'll see that we just have this kind of a output product information system if you if you observe how exactly express was written for you guys the same stuff is over here also i mean like only there was written the express application was written that's all so let me show you a real world project only i think so i might have it uh, ecom forward slash colon something like this okay column uh, 3010 so this is the domain name guys if you remember i told you yesterday this is the domain name ecom hyphen dev auto insurance.com port number on this particular server the port number 3010 the application is running guys these are people who are attending the weekend batch knows this application now so if i just hit enter here you see this is the back end that is running okay so generally a end user generally an end user someone who is using the application customer will not not know about this port number only the developer and people who are testing the application will be aware of these port number and it's not that it's a hidden treasure or something that we need to figure it out it's going to be a part of the discussion in your development team so everyone is obviously aware of what exactly is the port number and all those things these informations are well documented like i said that documentation needs to be done these documentations will be provided to us nothing is hidden kind of a stuff or if it is hidden then you need to just go to the developer and ask where exactly these informations are okay you can bluntly ask him because he is going to give the complete ownership like he has the ownership he has to tell me where exactly things are okay so this is a, a real while uh, kind of a stuff that's there and over here if you see carefully i told you that whenever we make a api request we need five things i need the base url i need the http verb i need the end point i need the header and i will need the body that is going to come into picture five things and my job is done okay if i have this five things i can make the api request but if i don't have any like if i'm missing something over here then i'm screwed because then i don't know what to do you can't play around right you can just um, experiment things because we need to get these information from the developer itself so when i say that i need these five things i need these five things from the developer okay so i need these informations coming from the developer or from the product owner someone who is just managing this project needs to give this information to me only then i can proceed with the testing part make sense to everyone where exactly these informations are going to come into picture and who is going to give me this information 
question concerns doubt good morning guys yeah at least one person should take a ownership of replying to me over here is my voice audible to everyone yes yeah so any questions over here guys can i proceed with the first api request yes okay mm -hmm. thanks <laughs> so yeah thank you thank you very okay so over here guys if you observe base url right the the protocol is there http protocol okay <coughs> the second thing over here is i'm not giving the url i'm giving the port number okay uh, sorry i give the ip address followed by the port number so yes base url can have a port number it can still work on a port number this thing is going to be allowed to us okay so if you do not have a domain name like how we have attached a domain to this particular application we can still work on the port number when you see 139 59 9196 it's the same server on which circle is running okay so this is a same server on this particular server circle is running on sub port number 9000 or something uh, whereas this particular application is running on 3000 okay so i'm just going to copy this part on the first thing go back to your postman and let's cancel this one and i'm going to click on plus button over here so this tab opens for me and over here i'm going to enter the first thing http colon 139 colon 3000 this became my base url now the next thing that i require is the end point acha what is the end point what we what is actually the purpose of an end point it is the name of the api it is the name of the api so my developer has created an api which is called as sign in okay he has created it in a resource there is a resource that has been created called as user inside that stuff there is sign in somewhere so this is the hierarchy that comes into picture so i'm just going to copy this part the complete path and i'm going to go over here and i'm going to paste it up user forward slash sign in okay the next thing that i require over your guys is going to be the header so how many things i have given i have given two things 139 59 9196 3000 3, this is going to be my base url user forward slash sign in that is going to become my end point for the first api that is coming into picture now the next thing that is required over here is http verb the http verb over here is post operation it's a post operation post basically signifies insertion you are trying to insert something into the database table something is going to get created that's what is happening over here okay so i'm just going to go back to the postman application and i'm going to make it post okay now let's go to the next section header what is written over here header is content type application json what did i tell you about header header is an extra information that you are going to give to the server when i say server you're going to give it to the uh, api request the application is going to get this extra information so content type application json what exactly this line signifies header is a key value pair data so what is the key the key is content type what is the value application json what is the key key is have content type and application json so what exactly is content type application json let's try to decode this line now when i say guys that uh, content type so if i go to the header section and these are the you see these are all recommended header it's not mandatory to pass these things but these are recommended okay these are optional headers that postman attaches so you just need to keep these things off but whatever i am going to put at this line now it's going to be a mandatory header that we need to pass for making the api request these are optionals which postman is adding but the one which i'm going to add now is a mandatory header why because obviously my developer has told me that you need to pass content type application this so that's a mandatory part now over here guys um, when i say content type so let me just type content type over here so content type content type basically signifies in which uh, language or in which uh, what type of a content i'm sending it to the api what type of content i'm sharing 
so the content type is going to uh, signify what kind of the content what kind of the body it's going to go into the api so that is the extra information that we are trying to say over here so if i write application json it signifies that you are going to send a json body okay it signifies that you are going to send the json body to the api so we are making the request the request is going to send the json body so i'm going to click on the body tab and if i go over here there is nothing which is called as um, json right there's no option which is called as json so but we are seeing that we are going to send the json kind of a body so how we will do it so we are going to say it raw select the raw option and you see that automatically json has popped up over here so from the drop down you see that json is there and if you remember yesterday what did i tell you that in your api request specifically your rest api i can send data in text javascript json html xml css any kind of stuff i can send it it's going to work over here okay so that's basically uh, uh, like how you're going to send the json body now let's take a 101 on json okay very simple topic um let me just open my note word pad over here this thing is yeah white board assume the screen share okay now so what does content type signifies what kind of a content we are going to send to the api request so this is a very important type of a header can we as an interview what are the various headers you have worked on see asking for interview question they can ask you any thing which is there in your project just to see what you have worked on so it's very important that uh, you understand what were the different headers that has come into picture okay what kind of a different bodies that has come into picture what were the new uh, like different kind of issues that you have faced okay so these days uh, if you look like people who have given interview knows better than me like over here that when you give an interview now it's not like a um question and answer round it's a it's a conversation two people are having right so you know that whether the person is lying or not or whether like how exactly the person is answering those things so it sounds like whether this person is technical or he's just playing around with the words so it's a conversation that two people are going to have so that's that's how these interviews are going to happen now so anyways content type basically signifies uh, what kind of body we are sending and i have selected that my header content type is going to be application json yes sir which means that my body or my request body better word would be request body because we are putting it inside the request the request body is going to be a json body that's going to come into picture so let's bring a json a json okay it's a, just a one on one there's a lot of thing in json so i'm just going to take a simple topic on json so a json basically stands for java script object notation that is the full form of uh, json but it's a very simple thing okay it's just that the word sounds little bit technical but uh, it's a very simple thing a json is anything that starts with a curly bracket and ends with a curly bracket is going to be a json anything that starts with a curly bracket and ends with a uh, curly bracket is going to be a json first thing in a json json follows something which is called which is the key value pair if you remember even your header forms into the same category it falls into the category of key value pair uh people who have worked on little bit of java there is only one data type i'm just talking a little bit technical over here so that people who know little bit of java can also relate to this part now uh there is only one data structure that works for you guys in your key value pair and that is going to be your anyone has worked on java little bit maps maps yeah so whenever you see your header coming into picture and if i want to make an api request in java you will need something which is called as maps similarly key value pair is coming over here also okay so if i want to make a json in java you will require maps to come out over there okay let's 
do you want me to add a little bit more technical technicality over you are using python dictionary is going to come into picture okay so those it's 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 like you know one thing right you will be able to do other stuff also because everything are just it's just connecting the dots so you don't need to really by heart where exactly maps are going to come into picture you just need to know that if there is a key and a value if there is a key and a value uh then something called maps is going to come into picture json is also a key value pair that is also kind of coming into picture xml is also something like that so these things are all correlated connected to each other okay so there's it's nothing technicality over here it's just that something called maps might come into picture anyways what is a key and a value content type application json so content type was my key application json was my value pretty simple so here guys what json say that it it follows a syntax that anything that starts with a curly bracket and ends with a curly bracket is going to be a json so i made this two curly bracket the next thing is i want to give a key and a value right that's what they told, told me it's going to be a key and a value so let's make a json so i write the lhs part the lhs part is always going to be the key the rhs part is on, only going to be the value so let's say i write name but how name is written i have written it inside double quotes okay it's inside a double quote part 1 so this is my key what is going to be my value let's say it can be anything let's say i write arti arti becomes my value over here but if when you write a key and a value you usually put a double quote or like a equal to sign right but in json there's nothing called as an equal to this equal to is now replaced with in json with col uh, this colon okay this is a semicolon this is a colon so this you call it as a semicolon it's there on your keyboard you know where exactly it is and this is a colon the two dots is basically a colon so the key name is the key is name and the value is arti that is coming into picture so this is a json that we have created if i have to just beautify it a little bit it looks like this okay so this is a json with only one key let's say i want to have multiple keys now so what will i do i'm going to write something like this password okay this is our second key okay colon and let's say the password is 1 2 3 done okay but how exactly json understands that this is a second key so what you need to do guys is once the first Well, key is completed. This entire stuff is completed. You need to put a comma. You need to put a comma. So the whenever you're gonna have a second key, na you will always put a comma over here. So this is name, and the value of name is R T. Since we have a second key, I'm gonna put a comma after R T and give the value one two three. Now you notice that I'm not giving comma after password because that is my last key. so all your last key na you are not going to have anything you don't need to give comma or any of these things this is more than enough for us okay this is a simple json that we have created okay now let's play with json little bit more over here json is little bit more powerful you know like it's it's so lightweight like why do we use json a lot is because it is lightweight okay first what is the meaning of lightweight um have you tried uploading a file on a google drive right so if you are trying to upload a large file it's going to take a lot of time because it needs to upload it so the file size is pretty big it's going to go over there it takes a little bit of time for uploading so on and so forth at the same time if you have a file which is of just like 1 or 2 kb it's going to just quickly happen like in a second or so right so json files are very lightweight files they are not heavy ended files and when you are making an api request we want that the data that we are sending to the api should be quick it should not be like okay we are sending a heavy ended file like like in mbs these files are in kbs they are going to just happen quickly that's why json we are we prefer json because they are lightweight the second reason that we use json is because it is very easy to understand okay now you just made a pretty simple json okay i just started with a curly bracket ended with a curly bracket gave the name okay and let's say the value was rt comma password colon 
Now, if I ask anyone, what is the value of name? You're going to say Arti. What is the value of password? You're going to say one, two, three. How many keys are there? Name and password. Easy to understand. There's nothing difficult in JSON. Okay. The second thing that comes into picture now is nesting of JSONs. You know, I can make complicated JSON also in um, the uh, co complicated JSON structure. Okay. But it's not going to be that complicated. It's, it's going to be very simple. So nesting of JSONs is also possible. What do I mean to say by that? You know, like, what did I say? Anything that starts with a curly bracket and ends with a curly bracket is going to be a JSON. The second thing is going to be a key. So let's say I give the key over here as name one more time. And the value of name is going to be, let's say, Nina. Okay. This is the first thing that I've given. The next thing is I'm going to give a second key. So I'm going to put a comma over here and I'm going to put a double quote. Let's say, uh, I'm going to give an address. Okay. I'm just going to have an address key. So for address guys, observe how I'm giving an address. I'm going to put a colon over here and I start writing something. Okay, line number two, let's say uh, something ABC and let's say country, yes. okay, then you might have zip code 400 something, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so what has happened over here? This was a direct value, name equal to Mina. But what does this address key is storing inside it? You know better. What is this? What does if address is the key? What is the value of address? It's a value. It's another JSON that is coming into picture. Because what did I tell you? Anything that starts with a curly bracket and ends with a curly bracket is going to be a JSON, right? So address is actually storing another JSON inside it. Make sense. So I have a JSON, a main JSON inside that I have another JSON that is fitting over here. Okay. So JSON can have any kind of a value. So this JSON was having a normal value, but this key over here guys is storing another JSON that is coming in the picture. Nesting of JSONs can happen over here. Make sense. So if I ask you, what is the address? So you're going to say that address of Mina is actually a JSON that is coming in the picture. Yes or no? Mm -hmm. Questions, confusion, doubts. Is this it's clear. clear? It's clear, right? Yeah. So now guys, this thing can proceed anywhere. Like if you want, I can have another more nesting of JSON. It's, it's a no. We don't need to worry about any of these things. So let's say I have a mobile number field. This is my mobile number and mobile number. Let's say she has two mobile number. Let's say landline. I don't know if anyone uses any more that stuff. So landline, uh, you're going to have some number one, 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 one. And let's say you're going to have a mobile number. Okay. Nine, 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 nine. Okay. So you put, you see that I'm putting a comma on the only on the first field. Zip code never had a comma over here. This is not a comma. It's just a dot. That was there by mistake. So nesting of JSONs can be there. This JSON address has these uh, adjacent mobile number is also a nesting of JSON. So these things can proceed n number of time. Okay. Like I don't need to worry about this whole stuff. It's going to get whatever is my requirement. I can get that stuff done for you guys. Okay. So over here, this is how. Jatin, 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 question. Yeah, Manav. So uh, this uh, will this mobile number also act as an uh, like you know a key because yeah. it is. Yeah, know. this is line number line number one, line number two, country, zip code, mobile number. These are all key, and okay. they have their specific values. Okay, understood. Landline is also a key. So mobile like. Like we were, uh, uh, like, you know, discussing the key value pair, like for in the first case, name was the key and Mina was the value, right? 
so here in the second case uh, address is the key and in the value part we have a json inside yeah. that we have actually two json's right one is this uh, line one line and two continuous zip code and the other one is mobile number which has two values so that's why we have started exactly. this is this becomes a key okay mobile number is also a key which is storing another json now okay understood and line line is becoming the key mobile number is also the key okay okay so this way the nesting is going to keep on continuing whatever you want you can get it back okay, okay. yeah yeah questions guys any other questions is there any rule like for the breaking of that nesting like no rule as in like, making of the nesting uh, the uh, the system design i mean like what exactly you want uh, how the json needs to be created okay so it's more really goes into the system design architecture and how exactly we are going to store the value in the database table so if i have to explain you a little bit more technical this json what you're going to create is going to get resembled with the database table make sense so if i go name okay and this is going to become address so address is actually another table that is going to be there and which is going to have line number 1 line number 2 country zip code okay so this is basically going to be the primary key over here the foreign key concept all those things comes into picture but that's all together development issue we don't need to worry on that stuff okay but you need to know how to do the parsing of json okay so whatever the json body that you send right as i said everything is going to happen on the database tables right the api is going to perform the action on the uh, database table right so we need to send the data in a certain order that it becomes easy for the developer to perform that action okay so that's why we need to create json in certain fashion now the next thing over here guys comes into picture which is called as parsing of json okay let's bring the parsing of json into picture now what is the value of name what is the value of name meena meena mean a pretty straight forward because that what you saw what is the value of address another right what is the value of address jason yeah so one word we add over here is this what you see over here is we call the full word if you want to call it it's called as a json object i did not wanted to bring that technical word people thinking about object as a different thing only then this is a simple json object what you created over here right we call it json now the full full name is json object this is what you have created so what is the value of address a json object what is the value of mobile number another json json object json object that's what is going to be there now what is the value of line number mg road line 1 sorry now what is the value of line 2 abc what is the value of country us that's it now let's say guys i want to capture the value of zip code you know the value of zip code that is 400104 but we need to parse the json to reach that stuff and when we say parsing you are going to stand over here on line number this guy is going to be over here and from here this guy has to you are, you might have played uh, played those puzzle game or maze that you call that stuff right so from here you need to reach till zip code so what is the path that you are going to take over here so from name i am going to uh, from this this guy is going to start from the json object and he's going to go to address right from address where exactly i need to go to i'm going to go to zip code yes or no this is going to be my path i have to go to address and from address only i can reach to zip code i cannot directly touch zip code why because it is not in the main json it is a nested of json i have to go via address to reach zip code yes or no yes no yeah. maybe yes right so the parsing of the json to reach the zip code is going to be address dot zip code 
address dot zip code. If I do address dot zip code, I am going to get the value of this zip code field. Let's play one more time. You guys tell me, well, let me use a different color now. Red color. We, Jatin, are we not go going to use the name dot address? Not like that. No, name and address are in the same level. No? Why do I need? If I take name now, I'm going to get the value Nina. But name and mm, okay. I don't want the value Nina. I want the value zip code coming into picture. So you're not going to have name dot address. You have to go via address to zip code. Okay, so this is how it looks. Just to make it a little bit cleaner. This is your JSON. The main parent JSON has two keys. Name and address. Yes or no? The main parent JSON has two things. The address has another JSON inside it, which has zip code somewhere. Okay. So I, I don't need name. I need to go to zip code now. So I'm going to start from here only. I'm going to skip name. I'm going to go over here. And from here, I'm going to pick up zip code. The parsing, the path that I took over here was address dot zip code. Is this part clear? Yes. Okay. Let's go back. Let's choose a different one. Let's say I want to get mobile number. I want a mobile number. So how do I start? And how do I go? You guys tell me which is the path that I need to take over here. Address, uh, dot, address mobile. dot mobile number. Dot mobile mobile number. number. Perfect. I'm going to first go to address. Now I reached the address over here. Okay. An address, I have to capture this key mobile number, this value 9999 I'm looking for. So over here, I, I reach till mobile number and inside mobile number there is a mobile number so the path is going to be address dot mobile number dot mobile number this is the way we do the parsing now let's take it to a little bit next level is this part clear to everyone aisha atira are you guys understanding this part Okay, now let's take it to a different level now. Huh. Inside a JSON, we can have a JSON that what we came to know, but there can be one more thing that is there, which is called as a JSON array. That will be there. What is an array? What is a JSON? What was the definition of a JSON I told you? Anything that starts with a curly bracket and ends with a curly bracket is going to be a JSON. Very simple definition I give you over here. Next is array. In array, anything that st starts with a square bracket and ends with a square bracket is going to be a JSON, uh, JSON array. Make sense? Anything that starts with a square bracket and ends with a square bracket is going to be a JSON array. Now, let's try to build a JSON array for you. Now, let's say we have something like this curly bracket start, a curly bracket ending over here. And I see the name of the or the company name over here is the key over here is company name colon and I just give ABC. What is the value of company name? ABC, pretty straightforward. Okay. Let's bring the next thing into picture. I bring address. Colon. Address is the key. And over here, let's say this company has only one office. So it is going to be like this. So it's going to be another curly bracket start. And let's say the curly bracket is ending over here. So this is, let's say line number one, colon, 
ओके एम जी रोड लाइन नंबर टू लेट से पी क्यू आर मॉर्निंग कॉफी डिड नॉट हिट यू प्रॉपरली आई गेस लाइन नंबर वन लाइन नंबर टू द नेक्स्ट इज लेट से सिटी I give it Mumbai. You see that I'm putting comma everywhere because there is a new key coming into picture. And let's say I give a pin code colon four zero zero one zero four. But for four zero zero one zero four, I'm not going to give a comma. Why? Because this is the last key. Perfect. Now let's take it next level. This was the stuff that we have covered. A JSON, a key which is storing another JSON object. So these are JSON object. This is also a JSON object. Now, let's bring a JSON array into picture. Very simple. All right, employees, because multiple employees are going to come into picture now. Colon. Okay. How do I define a JSON array? Starts with a square bracket, bracket, ends with a square bracket. So let's use a different color only. To this is a square bracket. Start of the JSON array. This is going to store a uh, end of the JSON array. So what exactly JSON arrays are going to store inside? That's something that you should be focusing on now. A JSON array is going to store multiple JSON objects of same type. So it's going to store. Multiple JSON object. But I use the over here same type. Meaning, look over here. I write name colon. I give it over here as uh, let's say. So it's going to be like this. Name colon. Let's say Aisha. Comma. Name colon. Let's say Suman. Comma. Name colon. Let's say Raj. Comma. Name. Colon. Let's say Pratik. Okay, I have taken all the com permutation and combination that we have now. So, what do you observe? Uh, I missed something over here. This was the space. So, comma, comma. This is the last one. So, no comma will be required over here. So, here you have a JSON array, and what do JSON array have inside them? JSON object of same type. If you look carefully, the JSON object has of same type. We are all storing name inside it. Okay, not no other fields are there. Same type will be there. Okay, whatever is the key for one JSON object, the same keys are going to get repeated everywhere else. Only then it's going to become a JSON array now. Now the next thing over here. Let's do the parsing. Let's play the game again one more time. Pretty simple game. So over here, guys, I want to start with company name. Let's take it step by step. This is the guy. I want to go to company name, direct company name. You just ask me for the company name. You're gonna get the value ABC. Done. So the first one is pretty simple. You give the key, and your job is done. Taken care. You're gonna get the value. Now you say that you want city value over here. You want city to be in picture. So what will be the parsing that we will be doing? I'll be writing address dot. Quick address dot city. Pretty. This part is also taken care. Of. Now I ask that I want the value Suman to be in picture. Okay, so what should I write? Take a wild guess. What will come into picture? Employees dot name and name of ah, that's where we get stuck over here. Now you said employees. Boom, we came over here. And then you said names. Mm. So I'm over here now. 
Now I'm confused. Which door I need to open? There are how many names? One name, two name, three name, four name. Will you use index like a? Perfect. You will need something which is called as an index to come One. in picture. Okay. Now let's talk about numbering in your real world versus your computer and your programming. Now, whenever we do numbering in real world, right, we start counting from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's what we have been taught in school, right? Numbering starts from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But uh, in programming, it's a little bit different over here. Like they always want to sound start with zero. zero. We start going to start everything with zero. So Aisha, which looks as number one, is not not at number one in computer in programming. It's going to be at position number zero. Suman is going to be at one. Raj is going to be at two, and Pratik is going to be at three. The count remains the same. You still have four, four. It's just that my counting changed. So when you say that you have five fingers, you start counting one, two, three, four, five. Na, that's five. Five count is still five. But the if I start from programming, it's gonna be the uh, the index the counting is gonna start from zero, one, two, three, four. So the pinky finger is going to have the number four on it. It's not going to have five on it because we started the counting from zero. Okay. But you still have five fingers. Okay. It's not that you have four fingers. We just changed the counting. Okay. So we started the indexing or we started the counting from zero. So Aisha, which in real world, you might have assumed it's going to be on one index on one first position. It's not on first position. It's on zero. Similarly, name uh, Suman is going to be on one, Raj is going to be on two, and Pratik is going to be on third position. But the count is still four over here. This is a little bit tricky part, but I'm trying it easy for you guys to uh, make it easy for you guys to understand. So we want Suman. Okay. So over here, guys, I need to tell which place I need to go to. I need to use the index over here, which you count the counting, right? We call it as index. Okay, the technical word is index. Okay, even if you don't remember the index, we will be remembering index again in Java part. But over here, an index is going to come into picture and the index of Suman is, what is the index of Suman? It's going to be one. Okay, so employees, employees is a key, but what is employees storing inside it? It is storing an array. What an array? A, a JSON array into picture. So observe how my path is going to vary now. I'm going to write employees, not this is not you how you write it. This is wrong. You would have written this employees square bracket. What is the index that we want to go to? What will be the index for Suman? One. 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 You will write square bracket one dot name. Boom. And this is going to give you the value Suman into picture. Similarly, I want to take the value Pratik. So what should I have written over here? Employees, square bracket. What is the index for Pratik? Three dot name. Three. It's going to give you the value Pratik. Did you understand about the JSON now, how it works? Is my voice audible or it's breaking? Yeah, it's breaking. Oh, it is clear. Okay. Is this part clear to everyone? Right? It's it's going to be a very important part because parsing is something that you need to do all the time. Okay. Because you will be verifying the response, right? The response might come into JSON format. So you need to know how to fetch the value. Okay. So this is JSON 101 for you guys. Okay. Very simple uh, topic. So, Jatin, one just one little question. Uh, uh, like the employees table may have their phone number and everything as well, right? Uh, but here, as you said, that the data type should be the same of the same type, right? Uh -huh. So, if in case we need to store like email, which has like special characters like at the rate and phone, then it is going so to be available for everyone. No? Then it is going to be available. I mean, like I do not get special character mean. No, no like uh, that at symbol that we have in. Uh, like it is treated as a uh, special symbol, right? You put it like, in a double quote only. It is always going to be there in double quote. So okay. you have jatin at the rate gmail.com. It's going to be a double quote. Okay. okay. So the value will always be there in double quote. Okay. So even if like I uh, have this name and I put some number, 
and then it That's is allowed uh, it's going to be under deep. double quote right yes. right okay name doesn't really matter because you are not doing a validation over here 1 2 3 it's okay understood it's still going to work understood yes. to do with characters see there is no i character. think yes yes shiva uh, yeah i think we can give numbers without quotes right we can do it but uh, we are yeah. talking about this guy, like correct correct there is yeah, no validation correct. you can do anything now it is now it is string whatever now we put this is a string this is a string yeah this is a string now okay got it so jatin uh, there may be a case uh, like the name uh, could be in the multiple like these are these are the four values here only hmm. and we can have a number of uh, values in the, for the employees hmm. so what what would be the case like if if we want a value uh, from from those n number of items you need to know the index yeah you will need to know the index okay so uh, how can we find the index uh, like a value gorav may be on the 50th number and we don't know uh, the uh, value then you have to search in the array where is gorav you you at least one thing you will be knowing right either you want to know that you know the name mm -hmm. right that you're looking for gorav that is called as searching okay. okay and the second thing is i know where exactly you are so i'm going to go to that place okay so in the in the you're asking about the later one that is i don't know where is where gorav is right yeah and this kind of a scenario comes into picture when you are trying to deal with dynamic json where the yeah. positions of their keys are going to change okay so let's little bit advanced topic so let's i'll just explain it in little bit now uh let's say aisha was on position number 0 but later on when i try to do uh somewhere the position of aisha changed from 0 and now it is at 10th position okay okay sometimes the positions of the values are changing that's how the system is uh, behaving now okay let's say this is a rank or game that you are playing today aisha was on first position now aisha came on second position or third position these values are going to change so how do i deal with that stuff so for that stuff that's that's your question like uh, i know the value but i'm looking for the index okay yes yeah over there guys you need to deal with the you need to first find where exactly is aisha present in the array or not okay so you're going to use a uh, at a uh, find index method of that would be there somewhere in java script because you need to use a programming language for that so there will be some utility that or some method is there which is going to help you out find the index of the element okay of the value is going to give me the index where it is there okay and then i can proceed with, proceed out okay so find we we need to find index. that uh, from find from index. postman only or with some okay. other id postman postman okay postman uses javascript as a programming language okay 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 yeah so but it's a very important scenario what you asked over there um, generally that will be the question that will be there in your interview so if you have okay. a dynamic the, the question is like this how do you deal with dynamic json that is the question that people ask uh, a dynamic json is a json in which the key positions are going to change all the time Or the, the values which you're looking over here, it's not going to be fixed. Somewhere Aisha is going to come down, Pratik is going to come first. So you need to know how to handle those things. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. So parsing is not going to be. It, it's this way. I cannot do it. I need to first find the value. Okay. But we'll look into that part later. We'll sure. Sure. Yeah. So I hope the JSON part is understood to everyone. Okay. How exactly we are dealing with JSON. So what I'll do today is I'm just going to give you a couple of exercises for today for practicing on the JSON part. A little bit difficult, and all you need to do is you just need to know how to do the parsing of those things. Uh, maybe after the class I'll try to find some difficult JSON for you guys to practice on, because uh, simple JSONs are something like it's, it's JSON is not a difficult topic, but when you are working on a real world project, right? What happens is the you're going to get so intimidating response back that you will be like, "Arey, what should I do over here?" Okay. so it's always better that we practice on the difficult part itself at least like you say like uh, think for the star but at least you're going to reach to the moon right somewhere you're going to reach out over there so let's make things little bit difficult only so that 
at least we have a little bit um, a higher um, knowledge somewhere we just increase our knowledge over there that's all we are looking for so let's stop over here for today i wanted to make the api request but we ended up on json topic so in tomorrow's class we'll focus on making the api request okay but please make sure that you practice on the json part if api making api request is not going to take a lot of time okay so i hope this part is clear to everyone what we have done for today okay and if you want me to make that api request it's not a big thing i'll just make it off for you guys i'm just going to copy this line okay just go over here paste it the credentials are not going to change this is a very static ip uh, static credentials so the email address and password value please do not put pratik suman any of those things it's not going to work over here you just put this thing hit the send button and you get a json back jitin you are not sharing the screen oh my bad sorry i thought like it's there okay yeah so what i did over here guys is i just went to back over here i just copied it the entire stuff go back to your body paste it hit the send button and you get a json data coming back and now you see over here guys that uh, the response that is coming back the this which you see over here is the response body so the sections which are there in the page let me just highlight it for you guys uh this section which you see is basically the request section the bottom section which you are seeing over here is the response section okay so you make the request you get the response now in the request you had the body so we call this a request body in response you have a body so we call it a response body in the header if you remember we sent content type application json over here also you have a header so this is a response header and if i go over here the body you can see that you're getting a json body so if i go in the res response header you'll observe that you have a field which is called as content type application json meaning the api after processing the request is also returning me data in which format yes api JSON. after it's json format in the json so the response header also consists content type application json so that is telling me that acha the server is sending me data back in json format that is what is happening over here okay now look carefully over here also there is a nesting that is happening what is the value of status success what is the value of data json object json object what is the value of user json object json object right so let's say guys i want to capture the value id so what will be the path that i will be taking data user id data dot user data dot user or what data dot user dot id dot id yeah yeah you need to go to id that's it done you know how to do the parsing part okay now you can make those api request also i'm keeping it up you can just follow this documentation okay for today if you want to practice it off i have given what is the url what is the http verb and all those things uh the only thing over here guys in the add product api if you're doing it for today only for people who are going to do it uh there is a field in header na there will be two things that will be required content type and app and authorization so for the next api request i'll just make this one for you guys this is the complete uh, end point i'll just copy this part go back over here click on plus hit it over here selected post in the header you're going to have two fields one is content type application json that is but obvious so because we are sending the data so i'm just going to go over here and i'm going to add one more thing content type and this one is going to become application uh, json this is the field that is coming into picture the next thing over here guys is authorization it's authorization so authorization is also a header that we need to pass for the add product api request but what is the value of authorization i have written over here it's going to come from login api as in where exactly is going to come from login api 
in the in the response section you will find something which is called as a token which is getting generated this value of token is actually the value that you need to send in the in the ad product as the authorization so this authorization value one thing also guys you see that i am not including the double quote please do not copy the double quote just copy the value from e to the last value okay and this value of json is always going to change okay this it's i right now if i hit send it might be something else it was at end i it was ending right it is m now so something else is going to come into picture so just paste the authorization value in the body section um let me just go over here just copy the json over here pretty simple json paste it off in the raw paste whatever the details you want to do it hit send there's an extra space such so just make sure that there's no spacing over here you see that there's a space right the blue block that is highlighted pretty big that's a extra space no space are allowed in the same you get a response back okay so what is happening chaining of api request needs to be done over here what is a chaining meaning the response of one api is actually input for another api and this is a very common scenario that happens every time that the response of one api is actually serving as an input for another api request okay so that's all about your json and how do you make these api request in tomorrow's class i'll going to just focus on the api part if you can practice it today if you have time that's fine else i'll show you guys tomorrow okay so let's wrap it up over here for today and i'll be seeing you guys tomorrow now take care guys great day bye 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 bye